Hello and welcome to another Tyco video. In this presentation, I am going to be talking about the recent enhancements that have been made to the calibration module. So as many of you know, calibration serves as a crucial step to achieving optimal results. So any kind of enhancements or improvements that you can make here will pay dividends later on. So as just a brief overview, I will be talking about the three different types of calibration frames. These include bias frames, dark frames, and flat frames. After that, I'll be talking about the proper scaling of dark frames and how that has been changed with this recent version. And after that, I'll talk about a really exciting enhancement, which is the ability to automatically select flat frames by filter. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is what the new image calibration module looks like. To start with, we have the ability to supply a bias frame, and I'll be going into some detail in just a moment as to how that is actually used in this implementation. Uh, next, we have the ability to automatically select flat frames from a given directory. And this is a very nice feature to have, especially for those who work with multiple filters. And finally, we have the ability to make these settings unique to the current observatory. And again, what I mean by observatory is simply a combination of telescope, camera, location, and other parameters. Uh, so for example, uh, maybe you do have multiple observatories, or maybe you just have one physical observatory, but it has multiple telescopes or cameras. So each of those combinations is considered its own configuration. So here we have the ability to have each configuration with its own calibration settings. So this adds a lot to the overall flexibility. Uh, the other item I wanted to talk about is the scaling of dark frames. So in the old version and also in the new version, you have this option where you can scale uh, the dark frame by exposure time. And what that is doing is it's looking at the exposure time of the light frame compared to the exposure time of the dark frame. It then computes a scaling factor. And the way this worked in the old version is that it would simply scale the entire dark frame uh, by that factor. So uh, the new version is a little bit more intelligent because uh, you are now able to supply a bias frame. So this is also referred to as the fixed pattern noise. So in this case, it's able to treat that independently of the actual dark current. So in this case, uh, when, whenever it does a scaling routine, it is going to leave that fixed pattern noise alone and scale only the dark current. And that is how it is supposed to work. And that is how it works now in this uh, new version. Finally, the last time I wanted to talk about is the automatic selection of flat frames. So uh, the matching criteria is based on uh, number one, the dimensions. So the light frame must have the same width and height as the flat frame. But number two, it also must match on filter. So what I mean by that is, uh, for example, uh, the filter value could be uh, luminance, it could be L, clear filter, B filter, V filter, so forth. Uh, as long as the light frame has the same filter as the flat frame, then it will meet that criteria. So the way that works again is you simply point it to a directory that contains all of your flat frames and the file names of the images uh, do not even have to encode the filter. So you could have, for example, flat number one, flat number two, that works just fine because the matching is done from the header of the image. So again, what that looks like is the header will, will contain a filter keyword and that will have the actual filter uh, present. Now, you might say, okay, maybe my images have a non-standard keyword for the filter indication. Well, I thought of that too. And so uh, if you go to this filter translator module, then you can specify your own keyword that indicates the filter. 
So if you want to access that, then you can go to the settings star catalog from the main menu. And when you do that, uh, there's a button here on this window that when you click on it, this is the filter translator, and you can add your own uh, custom keyword. So there's a lot of customization you can do, and this is one of those uh, ways to do that. So that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.